Let's make our way out of the coppice now. Get down on the edge of this meadow. Sheep have been through here, not for a couple of weeks, so hopefully there'll be some some life growing in there. It's a lovely meadow, you can see that it's not too overgrazed. Loads of plants, brambles and patches of nettles grow in there. Some nice young nettles, let's have a little look at those first of all. So just the top four leaves, that's all we're after with these nettles. I'm sure most of you know what stinger nettles are. It's definitely one of the plants you can identify with your eyes closed. Um, if you're unsure, touch it. No, but seriously, um, hairy again, spikes, I've got the stings on them. Top four leaves though, rather soft. Don't generally get stung picking the top four leaves. Sting's not bad for you. It's referred to as urtication, which is the... Uh, the art of, or the action of stinging yourself, creates really good sort of anti-inflammatory um, properties or a response. Each sort of stings kind of, I suppose like an alarm clock going off at different parts of the body and the body sort of focuses on that sting as you would. Um, and somehow it works for arthritis, inflammation, stiff joints, rheumatism and such like. I heard a story of an old farmer's wife that used to get beaten with stinging nettles in early spring and that would help her back throughout the whole summer. Um, I can sympathise with her there, I'm kind of thinking of doing it myself actually. But there we go, stinging nettles, plenty of young growth again. Where the sheep have been through, I suppose, grazed these off. Or at some point they've uh, died back and come into life again at the end of autumn. So just the top four leaves, really nutritious. Stinging nettles have a really bad reputation for plants, I suppose, because of their sting and they're seen as kind of being our enemies. But a lot of things that really protect themselves are protecting something that's really great. They're reputed to have five times more vitamin C desiccated. That's dried weight for weight than oranges. Well, obviously oranges taste really nice. I'm not saying give up oranges if you can get them. But um, yeah, loads of different stuff in there. Loads of protein. Okay, 40% I think desiccated protein. Um, loads of B vitamins. And again, back of the leaf there, it's got that hairy veins which look really like the lungs again really good at sort of getting that oxygen to the end of the capillaries in the lungs um, and all throughout the body so definitely not one to overlook the stinging at all like i say it gets quite a lot of bad press from stinging people but just remember that that's protecting something that's really great in there so let's move on across the meadow now um, i'm gonna get down to the edge of the reeds and along the edge of the hedgerow and we'll see what other plants we can find Right, out in the meadow now, with the woods up behind us. It's a lovely safe facing field here, or meadow. Um, it's nice and warm, I'm down in Dorset, so I don't know how typical this is gonna be for the rest of the country this time of year. I know up in Scotland it's got loads of snow at the moment, so, but uh, obviously it's all adjustable and seasonal. Two plants here I wanna talk about. I can just spot there. Something's been having a little dig here. Looks like a pheasant's been out and having a dig around. Two different plants here, both with spear shaped leaves. Both plants that, although edible, um, some caution should be taken. I'll just talk about them one at a time. Okay, that's the celandine there. Again, variegated leaf on it. Smooth leaf. It's going to grow a little tiny yellow flower. Looks very similar to a buttercup, but with more spikier yellow parts of the petals on there. Um, Young leaves can be eaten when they're like this. As a root system, which offers a very small calorific carbohydrate uh, substitute. Um, one thing I should say about this, although it's got a smooth leaf on it, it has got a groove stem on it, it hasn't got a round stem on it. That's what I'm generally looking for when I'm looking for edibles, is grooves in the stem and hairs as opposed to smooth round stems and shiny hairless leaves. Obviously there's exceptions to the rule and you really need to be able to identify every plant that you consume, especially 
if you're going to be talking about picking it and cooking it for other people. Uh, there's enough um, stories, unfortunately, of people who've second-guessed plants, possibly to appease their ego or peer pressure, saying they know about foraging when you need to be honest. And if you don't know the plant, don't eat it, and especially don't tell other people that you know what it is. Okay, so groove on there. Celandine, going back to the roots. Um, small roots, pile walks, one of its common names. Um, and the roots are very small, knobbly um, shapes. So I'm not going to pick this, uh, dig this up just yet for the roots. When I see the flowers come up, just before, as the flowers open, that's when I'd possibly look for the roots, or just as the flowers dwindle in that stage, that's when we go for the roots. It's the energy of the plant that we're trying to get. So at the moment, this is putting its energy out into the leaf and the leaf tip, and we, we consume the energy of the plant. That's what we're trying to take in, energy in, energy out. Same with the nettles. We don't need to pick the whole stem. It's just the tops we want. That's where the energy is being put. As things dwindle back down into the root system, that's when we'll take the roots. Um, different parts of the plants work in different parts of the body and in different ways. So the flowers and the leaves are slightly softer. They work on the exterior parts of the body in respect to medicine. And as we go deeper into the plant, down into the root system, that's when we'd use that medicine or the roots of the plant as a medicine to go deeper into the body, internally into the body. It's a fascinating subject, um, ever expanding. There's no such thing as an expert in this subject. I don't care how long you live, you'll never learn every single plant on the planet. And just as you get to that stage where you think you're an expert, something hybridizes, nature changes something, and a new plant is born. So continue learning this subject. Moving on to the next plant. Now, this is the uh, field sorrel, or the sheep sorrel, and the sheep have been in this field grazing it off. Um, no doubt eating it, and they've been away for about a month now at this field, so it's starting to spring back up again. Again, with this plant here, it's got a very slight groove to the centre of the stem again, okay? So, although it's hairless, um, and it's smooth, and it's got that spear-shaped leaf, which looks a little bit like a few of the poisonous plants. Okay, I kind of think that's like a spear into the heart. Something I'm not gonna take lots of, and I know from this sorrel and with other sorrels, that it contains an acid which can be too overstimulating to the kidneys um, and can have an accumulative effect. So it's something that, when we smell it, we've got that apple pip, lemony smell. It's unmistakable, okay? Um, as with the celandine, very, very hard to distinguish that by smell at all, and that's one we definitely have to go off sight of. But with this one, really lemony smell, as with the wood sorrel, okay? Um, oxalic acid, I'm not very good at pronouncing my Latin, oxalic acid, oxalic acid. Um, I'm sure somebody will tell me how it's pronounced. But again, it's got that kind of acidy, lemony flavour to it, okay? So really good as a stimulative tonic, but we don't want too much of it nice and a young salad but I wouldn't eat bundles of it throughout the year. The way to have a really nutritious diet, there's only one type of diet that's nutritious and um, we could say was healthy and that's a nutritious diet. Lots of varied plants so eating seasonally like we do when we're foragers and we're hunter gatherers living outside. We're on the land all the time, we're in the woods, we're on the coast, we're seeing what's growing and we're eating stuff at its best, consuming that energy all throughout the year and we never do ever eat a large amount of food as we do in monoculture. Our bodies are used to travelling through the seasons and consuming the food of the seasons. So that's just a few plants, that's a short video just hopefully to get you out there um, when it's cold or today the sun's come out and it's a beautiful winter's day and just remember the books are okay but when they say things are growing in July or they're growing in August or they're best in March, remember nature doesn't read the encyclopedias or the books nature and the plants follow each other and the weather and that's what you know brings the outcome and there's a conclusion to what we're going to find so go out there have fun stay safe and remember don't consume anything or give anything to anybody else or try to say that you know about something unless you've done lots of research on it and are eating it in small amounts and small bits just to say your body's adapted to it i'll see you soon check out some of the other videos um, hope you enjoyed that check out the website we run lots of different courses from the coast to the woodland um, everything from foraging, fishing and hunting, off-grid living. Um, I'll see you soon. Sorry, I meant to say that when we were talking about the celandine, if you are going to eat the roots, you do need to cook them. Sorry about that, I only noticed when I was watching it back.